Hello everyone, it's Laurie from Quick Scrap Craft. Welcome to this month's Off the Board with Pineapple Papers. Every month, the last Wednesday of the month, a group of scrapbookers gets together and takes inspiration from their Pinterest board. So we're all taking different inspiration. My inspiration this month is the photo that you see up in the left-hand corner. It is a card challenge, or card layout um, from the Inspired By blog. And I don't know how long this has been on my Pinterest um, board, but it's been there for a while, I'm sure, because I don't usually do card layouts. So what I'm gonna do today is actually show you how I'm interpreting this card layout into a scrapbook layout and then also how I'm using it to make another Christmas card. Um, I hope that you enjoy this two for one, right? And I know that I've been doing a lot of grid layouts lately and I'm gonna keep doing grid layouts. So I hope you enjoy watching them. If you enjoy watching scrapbook process videos in general, definitely subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on more process videos and hop along with everybody playing down below to see what they took inspiration from and all the cool scrapbook layouts that they created. So like I said, this is a card layout from Inspired By. You can follow them on Facebook. I know I do. They normally have card challenges, I think every week, and there's usually some sort of photo inspiration and sketch that you can play along with. I don't really play along with them because like I said, I'm not really doing cards, but I'm pretty sure that I have submitted a scrapbook layout to their challenges before. So if you're looking for something kind of fun that might, I don't know, get your creative juices flowing, definitely check out Inspired By. So for this layout, I've got, I had two photos of my daughter at her classes, uh, I guess Thanksgiving party back in kindergarten. So um, because they were both four by six, I, and I'm using cut aparts that are, I want to say maybe three by three or something like that. I decided to cut the photos also down to those that three by three size. And so one of the photos had to get cut, cut in half. Some of the kids I wasn't able to use. In my head, I thought I was going to be able to cut that photo into two and then I would have three photos. But uh, you know, when you're when you're dividing something in half, I, it must not have been exactly three by three because I just I didn't have enough left over to do another equal size square. So some of the kids are not going to be in this group picture, but that's okay. My kid is in the picture, and she's also in the the solo picture that's um, in the center of this layout. And the rest of the pieces are from Pink Fresh. They are from a fall themed collection. I can't think of the name. And then the background paper is actually recollections from Michael's from a paper pad that I've had for a long time. I didn't really want to use that paper, but at the time I had placed an order at Michael's for some solid color cardstock. I got a whole big um, package of 100 sheets of different colored cardstock, probably the most cardstock I've ever had in my stash <laughs> in a really long time. And um, I hadn't gone to pick it up yet when I was making this, but I really wanted to like sit down and create. So I just used these two pattern papers from a Recollections paper pad. They both have a gold foiling on them, so it doesn't really always show up that nice on camera. So apologies for that, but the background is sort of like pink and it's got houses on it you know, whatever. Is it really Thanksgiving-ish? No, but it's it's still, I thought the colors still went well with the pink fresh stuff. And then the other one is cream with a gold foil pattern running all across it. And again, it, it, not super Thanksgiving, um, but it's it still kind of matches with the overall color scheme. So I'm just inking the edges of all of these squares to make them stand out a little bit more including the, the edges of the photos. And basically I'm going to take these squares and do three across, three rows of three. So three, uh, a three by three grid. And um, yes, I am using double-sided adhesive tape, adhesive squares. Somebody asked me why I use them. And honestly, it's just personal preference. I know some people are hardcore ATG, which I believe stands for automatic tape gun, something like that. I know a lot of people love those things or a lot of people use uh, like a fine line glue, something like that. I have tried an ATG before and I just didn't like it. Um, I, I have had smaller uh, type of tape runners before that I've used, um, but I find that they run out really fast 
and then getting the replacements for them, or sometimes like they just break. Um, and, and it's just a lot easier for me to use the double-sided adhesive squares. That's what I started off using when I first started scrapbooking all the way back in high school, which was over 20 years ago. So let's just be honest with that. Um, and I just, I, they're easy to get refills of. They're not as expensive as like the ATG refills and that sort of thing. So that's why I use them. And I, I li also like it because I can cut them down to size a lot easier. Um, well, I mean, I guess you wouldn't have to cut uh, an ATG strip down to size. You could just put down as much as you want. But um, I like cutting my adhesive squares in half because then I... I use them, or it makes the roll last a lot longer if you're not using the full squares on the back of all the photos. So I'm just lining up my squares here. I have a bunch of fall embellishments that um, are from my stash, and I have them right next door to this layout here. Um, I don't exactly know what ones I'm going to use, but I have an idea for the title. Um, I got as part of my February haul, someone gave me some stickers and some of the stickers had words in them that said things like smile, fun, I think love was one of them. And because the card the card design had sort of a three-line title, I thought I could use that idea with those word stickers and do a similar three-word title on my scrapbook layout. Um, so that's what I'm going to end up doing. So I've got my grid squares down and I've adhered the cream colored gold foil to the very background 12 by 12 piece of pattern paper. And now I can start adding these little uh, word stickers. And now my smile is a little crooked and I will go back and rearrange that because I don't want it to be crooked. Um, but I'm just kind of adding in some extra little phrase stickers down at the bottom one. It's almost like each of these squares is going to get its own, or it's going to be its own embellishment cluster. I think that when you're doing grid layouts like that, it's a lot easier and you get to use more embellishments when you just kind of separate it by each square. Um, I feel like you can just do a little bit more. And I will say with that chipboard space that I put down on that bottom square, normally with a chipboard embellishment, I will use glue dots because it's just stronger for the chipboard. But I didn't have any more glue dots. That was also something that I ordered at Michael's because I ran out. And like I said before, I just hadn't gone to Michael's to pick up my glue dots and cardstock. So I'm making do with what I have for this layout. So uh, the embellishments are a hodgepodge of stuff that I've just collected over the years for fall scrapbook layouts. So that the, those Pink Fresh stickers, those are actually new that I purchased this year. And then I have some stuff from, I think, P13, as well as um, I'm going to be using some enamel dots from Simple Stories. I think that chipboard was, they're so similar. It was either photo play or crepe paper. I think it might've been crepe paper, um, but I've just, I've saved some of the fall stuff. I still have a nice little, a nice little selection of fall pieces. And hopefully I can start creating some more layouts as I get my fall photos printed from last year. I still am working on April. I think I'm going to wait to order May until I'm like almost done with April. So Normally what I do every month is I have like a pocket page where I do my monthly pocket page photos and you're not going to see one of those for a while because I haven't ordered any more, uh, any more new photos. Um, we went on a spring break trip in April last year. So I've got those photos that I still need to scrapbook and I've been trying to get caught up scrapbooking all my daughter's kindergarten photos that came home in her kindergarten portfolio. So I just have, I have a lot of photos and, um, and I think I'll have enough actually to get me through March. So definitely subscribe because there's going to be a lot more process stuff for you to watch and more inspiration for you next month. Um, and if you're already a subscriber, thanks so much for, for coming back to the channel and watching this video, I'm especially watching it all the way to the end. It's really helpful. So again, I'm adding a little more, a few more phrase stickers to some of the, some of the pieces. The, um, the bottom square on this grid is actually two separate pieces. So they came in a longer strip. 
the two little squares and then the rectangle. And so I just cut them in half and put the rectangle under the squares so that I would have something that would be the right size to go along with the rest of these, um, the rest of the squares in the grid because I didn't have a whole lot of extra pattern paper and there weren't a whole lot of the, the squares of the right size on the cut apart sheet. Does that make sense? Um, so now I'm adding in some enamel dots, trying to find colors that are very similar and I'm just kind of grouping them in threes, three different size enamel dots. Um, and it ends up where it's sort of, I'm like doing enamel dot clusters on all the corner, uh, squares. And, um, I think those are boho summer from simple stories. So right after this is done, I am going to show you how I interpreted this card layout into an actual card. And I did, I did use the note card bases that I had used when I made the Christmas cards that you saw in yesterday's process video. So if you haven't watched that and you really want to get some card inspiration, um, check out yesterday's video because I did the sheet load of cards with Call Me Crafty Al. So there's eight different cards for you to take a look at. Um, what I'm, what I'm trying to do with this, because it's very clear from looking at the inspired by photo that she had some sort of, of die cut that had the squares cut out of a frame. So it was like a white frame with cut out squares. And I think there were, there were three across and three or four down. Now I can't remember. Um, I was just looking, when I was doing this card, I was just looking at the little sketch that I drew on a sticky note to help me with the, the scrapbook layout. So what I thought was that I could use my square punch to get nice even squares and that's the problem with punches, paper punches, is that sometimes they don't, you, you can't place them exactly where you want them. So I wasn't gonna be able to get in on the edges, on the sides far enough to have my square grid be in line. And I also didn't have enough space to do three across. So I went back to the drawing board because I still had some white cardstock left over. And I said, well, I guess what I can do is I can either try to cover up those holes with squares, which I didn't really like. I mean, I still use the the, punch, the paper punch to punch out the squares and I will continue to use them as I go forth with this card. But that that little piece that I tried there, it just wasn't it just wasn't going to work. And I really needed I really needed to have that um, design on the front of the card covered up because obviously this is supposed to be a Christmas card and that's that's not gonna work, that's not very Christmassy. So I just cover it up with a piece of white cardstock that I'm gonna adhere to the card and then going through my pink fresh six by six paper pad and I'm using that square punch to cut out tiny squares. These might be one inch squares. I'm not totally sure of the exact measurement. So if you don't have a paper punch, but you still wanna have small squares like this, I would do one inch by one inch, um, start there. And if they're too small, you could go up like by half an inch until you find the size that is gonna work for your card. And I'm keeping this card uh, vertical, just like in the inspired by picture. Um, and I, even though you don't see that sort of goldy, what, what would we call that? Um, it's not corn flower. Oh, there's, there's a really good Crayola crayon color that I'm thinking of, but I cannot think of the name. Anyway, you're not gonna see that on the front, but it's still gonna be visible on the back. So I wanted to make sure that I found um, pattern paper pieces from this pink fresh paper pad that had that sort of goldy yellow color in it. Goldenrod, that's what I'm thinking of. I think that's goldenrod, right? Maybe? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. If you think that the yellowy golden color of this note card is should, should have a different color name, but goldenrod is what I'm thinking of. So again, I'm just measuring to make sure that everything is kind of even. That's what's really hard about doing um, grids like this. And especially because I wanted my Christmas cards to look nice instead of just kind of like whatever, which is kind of how I do my scrapbook layouts. Like, oh, I'm sure this is even, this is equal. Okay, whatever. Um, but I wanted my card to be a little more, 
a little more, um, a little better, <laughs> a little nicer looking. So I'm inking the edges of all the squares because I do want them to stand out against the white cardstock, especially because some of the patterns are a little bit light. I'm kind of alternating so that there's like a light color and a dark color and then a lighter in one row and then like dark, light, dark in the second and light, dark, light in the third row. Um, so I think I've got my squares complete. I really don't know how I was measuring uh, to get them in the right order, but somehow it worked out. And then it was just a matter of inking, inking the edges for everything else and sticking everything else down and making sure it was all in an equal, in an equal row and the columns were all equal. Um, so I'm only doing again, a three by three grid on this card, just like I did with the three by three grid on the scrapbook layout. And what kind of got me stumped on this card was doing the title because the original card had a three line sentiment and I just didn't have in my Christmas embellishments, I just didn't have enough good pieces. Like I have pieces, but I didn't have enough good pieces to do a three line title. And I, it took me a long time. You don't have to look at all of it on camera, but it took me a while to finally just say, it doesn't have to be three lines. Just because the original card design had a three line title doesn't mean that I have to do that. So, you know, here I'm kind of playing around with some of the embellishments, like maybe I could make this work, but I, I just wasn't liking the stuff that I had an, enough to put it in a group of three. Maybe if it was on a layout, yes, but on a small card, it was just gonna be too much and it was gonna cover up too much of the pattern paper squares, which is not what I wanted. So instead, I cut out this little this little guy uh, from the Pink Fresh Wood Accents, and I just used that. And that's the sentiment on my card. It's sort of offset. You'll see it in the close-ups coming. It's sort of offset, but that's the sentiment, and I just used one. And you can do the same thing, too. You can interpret this card design however you want, whether you're doing a card or you're doing a scrapbook layout. Um, I hope that this video was inspiring for you and that you try your hand at some Pinterest inspiration from your own Pinterest boards. And if you are playing along with us, please use the hashtag OTBWPP, which stands for Off the Board with Pineapple Papers. I'll see you next time.